name is Roshni and I'm here today to talk about toxic relationships. So I actually put up a poll on my Instagram to see if this was something that people were dealing with and if, you know, people wanted to hear about this topic and 100% of people said yes, they need this in their life. So I figured it was good timing for this type of video. When it comes to a toxic relationship, it's up to you to determine what is forgivable and what isn't. If you do have that space in yourself to forgive that person, then, um, you know, there's things that you can do. You can take small steps to build that trust. When it comes to forgiveness, there is the other side of it where something maybe major happened to you that just absolutely was unforgivable. Um, it wasn't something that, you know, you, you want to have part in again. It's extremely traumatic or, you know, deeply harmful to you. It is completely okay to go no contact. Your family loves you and limiting contact is a way to show them that you're really serious. This usually makes people rethink their approach because they still want you in their life and it makes them second guess whether the way that they're going about things or their wishes for you are really more important than having you in their life. And if they don't fight for you and they're not you know, changing to keep you in their life, it also shows you that there's better places that you can spend your time and that you do deserve love and you can find that in other ways through a chosen family, through a significant other, and, or, and through creating a family of your own. And if you are in that type of situation, I strongly, strongly suggest uh, reaching out to some support groups. So there might be something local in your city, um, but Reddit is actually a huge place for this and I follow some of these groups as well. So there is actually a no contact subreddit, there's a subreddit for narcissistic parents, there's actually a subreddit for Asian parents or Asian parent stories. Go online and see what you can find and um, any of the subreddits that I mentioned I will link down in the description below. But reading other people's stories, um, passing on words of encouragement to them, learning from other people's experiences, that's all really important. Your friends or other people in your life, they might be there to support you but they don't always understand your family dynamic. So being able to connect with other people that are going through the same thing is really really vital. So talking about uh, just boundaries in general, right? This is a really big topic and it can go so many different ways and I did want to mention that I do have a video um, talking about you know how to cut someone off and how to establish boundaries realize whether they're being respected or not and kind of move on so if that's something you're interested in I will also link that video down below but I wanted to talk about forgiveness and boundaries at the same time when it comes to forgiving someone right people sometimes think that saying that you forgive someone means that everything they did was, was okay or that person can interpret it by thinking that you know how they treated you was okay because now you've forgiven them but forgiveness can actually be a little bit deeper than that and more nuanced than that you can still establish even amidst forgiving someone that what they did was not okay that if they repeat that type of action you will not be able to forgive them. You can use setting boundaries as a way to establish forgiveness. So setting boundaries can show someone that you're taking their actions seriously, but that you still want them to be a part of your life. For example, if someone broke trust by sharing confidential information or talking about you negatively behind your back, you can say, I want to trust you and open up to you, but I can't do that if you're telling everyone things that I was only sharing with you. Is that something you'd be willing to work on? This doesn't justify the original reaction, but it still allows space for a relationship. I wanted to give you some examples of how to set boundaries. So the first thing is that no is enough. Saying just no is a good enough reason and that can be all that you offer. However, if you want to go deeper, a good way to say it is when you do X, I feel Y and it helps the person you're telling connect what they're doing to a certain effect that it has on you. It's also important to focus on the impact that a certain action or behavior has on you instead of just attacking the other person on what they did wrong. And the last thing is that boundaries don't have to last forever. You can have temporary boundaries that help you recover, help you forgive, and then reestablish trust. If you are going home, you can always stay somewhere else. You could always stay with a friend instead of maybe some of your family members. Um, you can go to, you know, maybe there's a main Christmas Day event with, you know, a lot of your family and you're willing to go to that but you don't want to necessarily spend one-on-one -on -one time with someone and it's completely okay for you to say no to certain things. You don't have to justify why you're doing those things, but if they ask you, you can say, you know what, this is my vacation time off of work, this is what I get, I want to be able to double this family time with also staying somewhere on my own, or, you know, I have hotel points. Like, you can literally say 
whatever, but that's a place where you can draw that line and say, look, I can either not come at all or I can come and stay in my own place. There's little ways to kind of come to a compromise and still be at the family event, still be able to catch up with people, but also not have that take such an emotional burden on you. When you're setting boundaries, be strong and be firm. When you respect yourself, others will respect you. Even with exes, people tend to leave certain doors of communication open, even if they say that they don't want to hear from them. So make sure that you're clear about what you want and be clear in your communication. If you hold up your end of the bargain, it'll make it a much smoother ride. There's a couple of tips that I have just for dealing with these certain days where you know you're going to see your family, you can't really avoid it, um, or you know you've already committed to coming and so you're going to just go. The first tip is just really simple. Have a physical piece of protection. I'm not talking about literally walking up in armor, but maybe you have a crystal or you have, you know, a necklace with a crystal on it that really helps you. For me, it's actually my jewelry, my the rings that I'm always wearing on my fingers. Like I just feel more like myself when I'm wearing my rings. It's not a, a an obvious way of showing that you're uncomfortable, but it's just a little piece of protection that you know that you have. Um, it could even be like a little note from like a friend, you know, a, a text that you save, just a little something where you can duck into a bathroom and listen to that voice message really quick, or you can, you know, go and like look at your phone and see like that happy reminder that you have for yourself, even if it's like a little affirmation that you write on a note card and you just have it in your pocket or in your purse and you just Take a moment, you're by yourself, and you just pull it out and you remind yourself that it's going to be okay, that it's just one day that you need to get through. My second tip is that, you know, when someone is really asking you these offensive questions or putting you on the spot or making you feel like you're not enough in some way, and it can really just inflame the situation if you have this big dramatic moment and you start screaming at someone and then it becomes this whole spectacle or a whole scene, whether it's, you know, at the mall or at your... Uh, family's house like there's ways that you can kind of deal with this where you just take a moment you step away or you know you can give them like a quick answer and just kind of go away but you can find a way to just get through the day get through the event or the party but then you can limit your contact afterwards you know if you don't want to have this big blow up scene that's completely fine but you that doesn't mean that you are okay with what they're saying so if you want to drive that point home a different way that you can do it and a little bit more of like a classier or a more mature way to do it is to just limit the contact with them afterwards so if someone really offended you let those calls go to voicemail or you cannot reply to all of their texts immediately there's little ways where you can limit contact and kind of through those actions establish a boundary but sometimes you just need to give yourself some time to deal with it and to approach the topic in a respectful manner uh, when you know that there's questions that you always get whether it is about your sexuality or about your partner or about your life choices or about your career path like there's all these things that people constantly bring it up, bring up and a lot of us kind of expect those questions or expect that that's going to happen and even if you expect it you can still dread it so if you have some time, you know, on the flight or before you go over, you start thinking about those things and think about how you want to respond, whether it's kind of in a funny way or just a short answer that kind of sums it up. You don't have to really feel so emotionally cut by it if you're at least a little bit prepared. It's totally valid to think about some responses beforehand. Use those to get through the events that you need to get through. And then another thing that I wanted to say is that um, being vulnerable and being honest has actually gone a long way for me. So something that I always, always get questioned about is, you know, I'm a few states over. I don't live in the same state as the majority of my family or really anyone in my family. And I constantly get the question of when are you moving back? And almost assuming like it's just this inevitable thing that I'm putting off. I used to get really, really offended and I used to feel like they were just putting me down and um, I, I just felt like there was something wrong with me or my life or people felt like I was making these bad choices. What I had to come to terms with was my own decision and feeling like it wasn't really out of anywhere negative. It's okay to just be vulnerable and to just be honest and that's what I've started doing. You know, when people ask me when I'm moving back, I am honest with them about my reservations. I'm honest with them about what I like about where I live. Um, I, I've really opened that up. And so when you actually are honest and you let them know like this is what it is and this is why I made these decisions especially when you know in your heart that you're not doing any anything wrong and it's not coming out of a malicious place most of the time they just kind of sit back and they listen and they say okay and they don't really have a, a response further than that sometimes it's not about shying away 
When you're guilty or insecure in your own choices, make sure that you're not confusing the truth of what happened with the projections of your own insecurities. Sometimes your family may just want to know more about you, even if it's not in the most tactful way. If you have your own insecurities about choices you've made, remember that your mind can conflate your personal feelings with the reality of what surrounds you. So remember to reflect and actually differentiate between whether you're projecting something onto the family member or whether it's really how they're coming at you and that it's them specifically that's the source of your pain. If it is something where they're just attacking you or, or being malicious towards you, that's when you can say, look, you know, this is a choice that I made. I, I wish that you would respect it or just kind of leave it at that. And then something else that's really, really important during this time is just having a support system. And I know that, you know, with toxic family members, it can feel like this is my built in support system. This is what I'm supposed to have. And even this isn't working. But again, finding people online, finding friends, um, even if they may not completely understand your family dynamic or someone that you can let them know, like, I had a really hard day. Can you just send me some words of happiness or a happy reminder or something like that or tell me something that you like about me remind me what is good about me because i honestly can't find that right now and those uh messages are really important because that toxicity it just takes it out of you it drains you it makes you feel terrible it makes you feel like you're not good enough it makes you feel like you should have this amazing family and maybe you don't and so having a support system and other people that you can reach out to is really really vital during this time especially when you're starting to feel low and don't wait don't wait until you're at the absolute bottom of the barrel to reach out when someone has knocked you down a couple levels that's a fine time to reach out to someone else and be like, oh my god, I had a terrible day. And if someone really did offend you or really did hurt you and you felt like, you know, they were just completely out of line with what they did, it is totally fine to, you know, after the holiday is over or after you're back home or whenever you things have kind of settled down from that time of year, it's totally valid to reach out to them, uh, you know, via a letter or a text message or an email or a phone call. And a lot of times I would say, um, when it is something that serious, I think a letter or a text or even a voice message or a voice memo could be could be the best way to reach out because when you're in the moment and when people are combating against each other and getting into a fight, you know, we can all say things that we don't mean. Having a way to communicate with that person, even if you're not expecting something back or even if you need to say your thing and then you know, maybe block them or maybe not answer their calls for a couple of weeks until you're ready to hear their side of it. That's a perfectly fine way to, you know, let them know that what they did really hurt you. And sometimes people may not know. People might feel like, you know, it as an elder, it's okay for them to say these certain things to you, or, or maybe they just do want the best for you, but their way of going about it is really, really offensive. And um, it's totally fine for you to let them know that in a way where they don't feel attacked either. Family will always be more receptive when you own up to your own mistakes and you're being really genuine. And it's important to reflect on what you've done in the past as well and realize that and state that as part of the behavior that you want to work on because it always takes two to tango, right? And it's never a one-sided relationship. And if you're putting all these boundaries down and asking for all of this from a certain person, you need to come to the conversation and say that there might be things that you can change yourself or maybe there's time where you kind of inflate the situation and you want to make sure that you're not making anything worse. Um, so you can take these moments to own up to what you've done in your own past in order to establish that trust and that bonding between you and the person that you're trying to have a better relationship with. You can write out your boundaries as well and say, you know, I, I would respect if you don't talk to me about this in this way, or I would respect if for a little while this certain topic was off limits in our conversation. But again, like I said before, if they're completely disrespecting your boundaries, if they're not willing to take no for an answer, um, then that kind of shows you more about where they're coming from and it shows you that it's more of an ego problem. They have to always be right or they have to always have the last word and in that case it might not be worth it for you to keep pursuing that relationship. And then the last thing I wanted to say is while it's really easy to put the blame on everyone else, it's important to realize where you might be toxic. And I know that this can be a really difficult um, subject and it can be difficult to deal with, but I've realized that in my past, even in you know friendships or even with my family, I was toxic. And it was hard for me to hear messages about myself from other people. And a lot of that just comes from your own self-worth 
work and your own healing process and when you really give yourself that time to heal and you give yourself you know that chance to be better and you allow yourself to forgive yourself and all the mistakes that you've made these are all steps that will help you realize where you may have been toxic or where you may have been wrong and when you allow yourself to forgive yourself you can start to see the other side of things you can start to see the other perspective and generally in a lot of relationships uh even family relationships both people have kind of gone wrong maybe someone is constantly attacking you and you don't stand up for yourself and then one day overnight you just absolutely lose it on them and that's not the right way to go about it either right so you need to realize or think about the past and maybe where you could have gone wrong um, thinking about whether you might be the toxic person or maybe you have a bad influence on other people um, just in terms of your energy or how combative you are and if you're always ready for a battle and you're just like putting out these fighting words at every chance you get it doesn't really allow the other person to grow either I wanted to end this video on a note of self-reflection because even if you aren't the most toxic person, there could have been things that you have done wrong or um, said that were hurtful. And if every single person who was a toxic person actually took the time to self-reflect and then self-correct, the world would be a different place. So don't lose hope and just be the best example of that that you can be. So unfortunately my camera died when I was ending this video, but I want to thank you all so, so much for watching. I hope you all have wonderful, not toxic holidays. If you enjoyed this video, make sure that you give it a like and subscribe. I will see you soon. Happy healing!